Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and a very warm welcome to the latest in our series of Doha debates sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. Iran is now at the center of a growing international crisis over its nuclear intentions. Its move to restart uranium enrichment is seen by the U.S. as a step on the way to a nuclear weapon. But the Iranian government says its nuclear program is exclusively peaceful. Who's telling the truth and can any of us know for sure? Our motion tonight is that this House believes Iran poses the greatest threat to stability in the region. And our panel reflects the wide divisions this issue has provoked. Speaking in favor of the motion, Nazanin Ansari. She's diplomatic editor of the weekly Persian language newspaper K. Han, based in London, and a frequent commentator on Iran. With her is Dr. Mustafa Alani, senior advisor and director of the Security and Terrorism Department at the Gulf Research Center in Dubai. He has both British and Iraqi citizenship. Against the motion, Michael Axworthy, former head of the Middle East Department at the British Foreign Office. He now teaches Middle East history at Exeter University and his biography of the Persian monarch Nada Shah is about to hit the bookstands. And with him is Sadek Zibakalam. He's professor of political science at Tehran University, formerly a political activist. He spent several years in jail for protesting against the Shah's regime. He's the author of several books on Iran and the Islamic Revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. And now let me ask Nazanin Ansari to speak first for the motion. At a time when the countries in our region, like Qatar, UAE, Bahrain, Kuwait, are benefiting from growth and development, there is one country at, the st at standing at the edge of an abyss, and that is my country, Iran. This is not because of the lack of want for us Iranians for a better life, but rather because of the nature and behavior of a regime Whose, that is concept, the basic concept of this regime that is founded on is the totalitarian concept of control in the hands of a few and with a mission, a core mission enshrined in its constitution to export the revolution. In effect, the priority of the Iranian regime at the moment lies beyond the borders of Iran and at the expense of the betterment and the livelihood of Iranians. Instead of investing and developing the infrastructure of the country, like gas and oil, they are diverting the resources and the funds into a ballistic missile program, into a dubious Chernobylized nuclear program, and into plans to undermine the stability in Iraq and Lebanon. Indeed, the regime in Tehran stands alone in the world in the rejection of the two-state solution for the Middle East conflict. Now, why all of this? Because the regime in Iran wants to divert attention from the massive failure in Iran. Our region today is more turbulent than ever in the past 27 years. If you take four crises right now that is confronting us, which is Iraq, Lebanon, the nuclear crisis, and Palestine, Iran, unfortunately, Iran's regime plays the decisive role in all of these crises, in each and every one of them. Now, why does it do it? Because of its misplaced and disjointed priorities. As such, the Islamic Republic is the indigenous cause of instab instability in the region. Nazanin Ansari, thank you very much indeed. Only one country at the edge of the abyss? King Hussein once described this as a very rough neighborhood. Quite a few at the edge of the abyss, aren't there? There is no hope in Iran. That is, when you don't have any hope, the social malaise in Iran, the economic malaise in Iran... Why is there no more... hope? There's a huge diversity of opinion in Iran. There's a whole diversity of opinion in Iran. But when you look at the... the uh, demography, 70% are under the age of 30, but every year the country has to provide 800,000 jobs. There are not enough jobs, and you see every year, according to the World Bank, 400,000, the best jobs of our Jobs is a problem throughout the region. Unemployment, 400,000. throughout the region. 400,000. the Palestinian territories, it's up to 60%. 400,000 of our best minds are leaving the country. These are the people who can build the country, and instead, they end up as refugees at the doors of countries in Europe. 
You paint yeah. Iran as the major threat in the region. Yes. Isn't the problem that nobody knows quite where Iran is going, what its intentions are, what its nuclear program is for? There's a lot of doubt. That doesn't make it the biggest threat in the region, does it? Just because there are in, a lot of doubts about it. In this war it. crisis that I mentioned, Iraq, Lebanon, Palestine. What's its problem in Iraq, for instance? It's getting on very well with the new government there. They've just loaned them a not, huge sum of money. Not, every day there is, there is a deep division between even the Iraqi Shiites. And but they've just there loaned them not, a huge sum of money. They're getting on very well, government to government, putting the past behind them. But there is still the indigenous forces of instability operating in Iraq. There is no hope, even for the Iraqis inside, about having possibly a better government, a better state of economy within the next year or two. So, and who is benefiting from that? The, the they're problem, more unstable, they're more of a threat to regional Iraq, stability than if, Pakistan, for no, instance. If Iraq becomes dem democratic, as the people of, it, of Iraq want, and they are going every time at these elections, and they are the ones who are voting, who will be the, the loser? When, but, but when, the, put, when the people of Iran, Iran in this when slot, the people, to label it as the major threat, you need more than rumor, hearsay, uncertainties, it is not rumor, and doubts. It is not rumor, which is and what it you've is given not, us so far. It is not rumor, and it's not hearsay. All right, Nazanin Ansari, thank you very much thank indeed. You. And now let me call on Michael Axworthy, please, to speak against the motion. Yeah. I do not agree that Iran is the greatest security threat in the region. The date for the end of the last period when Iran was a serious threat to her neighbors was June 1747, when Nader Shah died. Iran is not an aggressive or expansionist power and has not been one for a very long time. I'm not a, an apologist for the current regime in Iran. It's a repressive regime. It's manipulated the system to stay in power though there are other re regimes in the region that are as bad or if not worse. But Iran has not yet acquired a nuclear weapon and is several years away from doing so. I accept that there is a potential threat, but the gravity of it depends on how the problem is handled. And there are many other potential or actual threats in the region. Iraq, the Israeli-Palestinian problem, We've heard about some of them already, Pakistan, even doubts about Saudi Arabia. Perhaps above all, the threat of a narrow, distorted form of Islam that encourages hatred and violence, whether under the heading of Al-Qaeda or not. Ironically, the recent most major threats to stability in the region, Saddam and Al-Qaeda, were partially created by US and Western efforts to contain the perceived dangers of Iranian influence. In the end, the West had to accept Iranian influence in both Iraq and Afghanistan and work with it. The lesson from this is that problems around Iran are better addressed this way rather than confrontation or containment. We should apply that lesson to the nuclear dispute and handle it pragmatically, as is being done with North Korea. The nuclear problem is a potential rather than an actual threat now, but it will turn into a real threat if the West and Iran handle it confrontationally. The best prospect for resolving the problem of hostility between the US and Iran and the nuclear dispute that arises out of it is direct US-Iran talks. More widely, it would do no harm in the wider relationship between the West and the Islamic world for the US to be seen talking and negotiating with a major Muslim country about a problem rather than threatening or bombing it. Exaggeration and misunderstanding of the potential threat from this problem can also contribute to the confrontation. I therefore urge you to oppose this motion. Michael Axworthy, thank you very much indeed. You say approach this problem pr pragmatically. Yeah. You're looking at a state that has offered to wipe another one off the face of the earth. How pragmatic do you think they should be about it? I'm talking about their comments about Israel. Yes. I, uh, obviously it's those, easy for you to be pragmatic about it. That's perfectly true, and um, I don't live in the region, uh, which makes it easier. Um, 